Hi people, my name is Sergeant Debbie Davis and I'm a military whistleblower and uh, some people already know my story but a lot of people do not know my story um, so and I've never done a YouTube video so I wanted to do a YouTube video tonight it's Sunday March 5th and I'm gonna tell my story of what happened to me because it seems to be relating to certain things that are happening on the news right now and I want to convey what happened to me um, so uh, people can understand you know the kind of the seriousness of what's also happening right now too uh, I served in the Army National Guard for 16 years okay and um, and I was AGR which is Active Guard Reserve at the Army National Guard in um, Arizona Arizona National Guard okay and that's at the Papago military base in Phoenix Arizona okay and when I was working there I worked there in 2010 2011 but I worked there for a total of six years but I was AGR 2010 2011 and I accidentally pretty much became aware um, of these you know it seemed like obvious fraud or embezzlement happening crimes happening right under our noses when we were working there and uh, it became such an uncomfortable scary situation that I felt obligated to report it okay um, so I reported to um, Governor Jan Brewer's office military liaison person okay I'm gonna this is public document okay and I reported this in um, 2011 okay April of 2011 to Thomas Adkins and um, uh, the it's military liaison and then it went um, from there to the Arizona Auditor General and um, um, and and so you know what I said is there seems to be some kind of fraud or embezzlement happening here and <clears throat> the uh, this um, when they when they did the audit at the Arizona Auditor General they ended up finding 2.7 million dollars missing okay so you can look up this article right here this it they ended up finding 2.7 million dollars missing okay this you can look up Arizona guard embezzlement okay this is this uh, this was being embezzled from an emergency relief fund okay each state has one in the Arizona in the National Guard each state has something called an emergency relief fund that's set aside, is supposed to be set aside for emergency situations for families, uh, soldiers and their families, okay? And obviously they're much needed funds, families, veterans, you know, there was all that VA scandal that happened in Phoenix, you know, maybe they could have used some of this money too. There, there, this money was supposed to be set aside for, for, for very needed things and there was no, never any money there because it was being embezzled from illegally okay and so I did my best to report it and they that's exactly what they found here's me okay that's my that's when I was in uniform there okay and then and then um, I you know obviously I, I felt obligated to report it because I didn't want to be held liable so I'm sure you can understand the situation that I was in you know if crimes are happening you know you could be held liable so you don't report it okay um, but what what nobody knows is the story about what happened to me afterwards okay and this is what I want to tell tonight is that I right after this I was immediately fired and non recommended for promotion and barred from reenlistment and this is part I feel that I want people to know right now because uh, this um, I, I was barred from reenlistment and what happened is I was pushed into a room and interrogated okay and I was you know I felt they were interrogating me and they, it almost felt like they were trying to entrap me into saying something and when I saw the news today the last couple days and I saw Senator Al Franken um, questioning Jeff Sessions the Attorney General about you know what was your involvement with Russia you know it was almost like he was trying to entrap him into saying something 
okay, to me that felt wrong. That felt like, you know, you, you know, you're actually trying to put this person in a bad situation on purpose because that's what they did to me. Okay. And I, I was so freaked out that I ran out of this room. Uh, they, they barred me from reenlistment when I was in there. They did a, they counseled me for a bar from reenlistment and for no reason. And I still, to this day, I'm trying to fight this. And um, I haven't been able to finish out my last 20 years, obviously. I did 16 years, so I can't get my 20 in until I get four more years, obviously, because I'm barred from reenlistment. Okay, and um, and you can't just bar somebody from reenlistment. People that are in the military, you should know, you know, you can't, you have to have a significant amount of Article 15 or something very significant to do some kind of bar from reenlistment. I didn't have any of that on my record. Okay, so what they did to me was illegal. And plus, on top of it, they didn't um, they didn't um, offer me a legal counsel so I could try to fight it or appeal it in any way. And, I, you know, even if they did, though, I don't, you know, I wouldn't have trusted the JAG on that base. But, um, and, uh, but anyway, I, I did try to report this to, uh, you know, I, I was so freaked out that I ran out of the room and this was in Florence, Arizona. There's another base there. And I reported it to the local Florence, Arizona police. And they did end up coming out. And then they said um, they couldn't do anything because they have no jurisdiction on a military base. Okay. Um, so they couldn't do anything. You know, I said I, I literally got pushed into a room and interrogated. And then, you know, I'm, I'm really actually afraid for my life right now. And... Um, the other thing that's strange about that base is that there there's hardly any MPs around and there's no nothing there's no CID on an active duty base you have something called a criminal investigation division that you would report crimes to there's nothing like that on this National Guard base and it's a huge National Guard base people that are that are out there that work out there you you know how big it is i mean i think it's a total of 8000 between the air guard and the army guard and all the different bases in that area in Phoenix, in, in Arizona. It's it's a huge, and they, they, they don't have any kind of CID, which everybody that I've told this story to thinks is very strange because you need to have somewhere you can report crimes to. So um, I, um, so at this point, I'm reading this because I, I want to make sure I get the whole story here. Um, at this point, I was fired from my, regular job okay and when I was reporting to every day that I was actually working there full-time but I still had to go to monthly drills I still had to report to monthly uh, training you know because I was still in the National Guard so um, then I tried to report to monthly drills the next drill and I was just targeted like you couldn't believe like I was just uh, I was purposely told to go somewhere you know, wrong information. Um, I was purposely told information to make me look bad in front of everybody else. Like I have this, this text, this is from my phone, you know, where I, I said, Hey, you know, why did you tell me to go over here? Oh, it came down from the cock, the cock. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, these are, this is one of my, my staff sergeant telling me, uh, to report somewhere that didn't end up being the correct information. And then they tried to say I was a wall for not reporting to the correct place and things like that. These, you know, this is the kind of thing that was happening to me. I couldn't even go to drill. Um, it was, it was frightening. Okay. Um, it got so bad that I, uh, you know, I was literally afraid for my life to even go to drill. So I literally went in and I talked to a psychiatrist at the VA and I got an excuse, excuse from drill. Okay, some people think I moved out of state, and I was still there for a while. You know, I just wasn't attending drill because I was excused, because I was literally afraid for my life. Okay, that that's not normal. <laughs> okay, so you know, I was excused until my enlistment ended. I didn't report to drills there, and then I eventually ended up completely moving out of state. But um, at this point, I was still there, um, and I still and I continued receiving threats even if even though I wasn't even attending drill anymore I started receiving threats on my phone and on my text message okay and um, here's some of the printouts from my phone you know they tried to say you won't see it coming yeah they're, they're gonna take you down 
okay, you know, this is really serious things that are happening to me that happened to me on that base. Okay. And I've been really scared to tell this story for a long time, but this is what happened to me. And, um, I, uh, um, you know, I tried reporting this to many, many people. Okay. And, you know, all of these serious things that happened to me and here's, these are public documents and different things. Some of them, you know, this is Congressman David Schweiger's office. I tried to report it to, they didn't do anything. Uh, he's in Arizona Congressman, you know, this is the National Guard Bureau. I tried reporting this to, I said, Hey, help me, please. This is the National Guard IG. Okay. You know, these are just, and, um, of course, Senator McCain. And he didn't do anything to help me, okay? Senator McCain knows this, this story, and he doesn't do anything to help me or anybody else that has gone through anything at that base. And there's a lot of other uh, things that happened on that base that are very, very, I've talked to at least three or four other whistleblowers. You know, one of them was in the recruiting area, uh, one of them was at the Air Guard. Okay, there's a lot of serious things happening on that base, okay? and. So, um, and then, so here's my last, you know, letter that I got from the DOD IG, Department of Defense IG saying, you know, we're still looking into your inquiry. Okay, here we are five years later. Okay, and I still haven't gotten a response back from the DOD. Okay. Um, um, so, uh, okay, then, then after that, um, you know, I started having uh, very strange things, you know, the text messages and then other strange things happen on my phone. Okay, like it, it seemed like my phone was tapped. Okay, I've never had my phone tapped before, but I started having um, uh, echoes and clicking noises and, you know, very obvious things to seem like somebody was on my phone. Okay, so at the time I was still living there and I brought my phone in to the Scottsdale spy store. Okay. And there's a, there's a spy store in Scottsdale and, um, they, they did confirm to me that it seemed as if my phone was tapped. Okay. And, um, they said, yes. And, uh, the guy was a young guy and he said, um, yeah, the Arizona national guard is in here, the store all the time to get spy type stuff. Okay. And I'm guessing he probably wasn't supposed to tell me that, <laughs> but he did tell me that. Okay. And, um, so the question now is, you know, okay, so who and why is somebody given permission to tap an innocent whistleblower's phone? Okay. And apparently this is the kind of thing that's happening all the way up to DC, Trump's administration and everything too. Um, you know, I was already interrogated. They already know what I reported. The colonel was already indicted and my phone was still being tapped for some reason. Okay. This is illegal people. This is illegal and um, this is a legal activity that's happening within our government, okay? You know, you're supposed to have a warrant or probable cause to tap somebody's phone, okay? And uh, so, you know, and so here I am, like I said, five years later, waiting for the Department of Defense to get back to me and look into this. You know, I don't, I don't know how much more obvious it has to be that I was wrongfully retaliated here or reprised against, you know, I, I was supposed to be protected under the Military Whistleblower Protection Act. Okay, but apparently, under the Obama administration, that act didn't protect anybody. I've talked to other whistleblowers, and there was horrible things under this administration that happened to anybody that tried to do the right thing in any way, okay? Um, you know, people don't, people, um, you know, don't understand what I'm, why, the reason why I want to say this video is because, um, it's been, it's been very, very difficult under this last administration to be in the military, a very scary situation and, um, very awful. Okay. And, um, I, I'm sure other soldiers agree with me. And if you agree with me, um, email me, you know, my, my email is mwtech. M W T E C H 2008 at gmail.com. And, you know, what I want people to know, you know, including Hollywood and all these people that are, you know, against this, this, this change in this new administration. I mean, 
you know, people don't understand. They don't have any idea how much the military has been suffering under this last administration. People in Hollywood or any, any of these other people. I mean, we have been through living hell with this last administration. I mean, constant cover-ups and you have to wait years to get anything done. And it's just lie after lie after lie. And, um, you know, I, that's one of the reasons why I feel like I have to tell this story. And, um, you know, if you have a military story and you're a whistleblower, I mean, feel free to email me, you know, because um, I want to hear your story. I couldn't get any news stations to do this story, okay? And that's the other thing I want to tell people is that um, I tried contacting all kinds, probably at least 10 different media stations. You know, I'm on the phone, I'm sending emails, I'm sending letters, okay? Um, and, you know, this is a big story. There was $2.7 million embezzled from a fund. You know, it's one of the hugest National Guard whistleblower stories. And I couldn't get anybody to do my story. And I didn't want to just do my story because of me uh, and what I was suffering. It was also, I wanted people to know, to warn other people about what was happening at that base. Okay. And this is what we mean. What This is what, when you say fake news or something, this is why why people are saying that is that, is that it seems like the media is picking and choosing what they want to put out, the information they want to put out to people, and maybe they're not doing the entire story, or maybe not they're not doing important story, other stories that are important, you know, that they just don't want people to hear. Like they obviously didn't want people to hear my story, so they, they nobody would do my story. So I'm doing a YouTube video. Okay, so, um, you know, they, they're... There's, there's other very serious stories that were never reported, other really, really serious things going on in the military that were never reported on. Nobody wanted to touch military stories, okay? So um, with that, I guess I'm going to end for now, but um, I probably will be posting more videos. This is just a portion of my story, but um, I feel free to email me, like I said, and um, here's my email address again, okay? And... So I hope this helped other people and I want people to know that, you know, there's other people suffering that are in the military and, you know, we, we should be talking amongst each other. So um, thank you for listening and God bless. Bye.